Good day, and we're going to be continuing now looking at options for design fires. We've had various discussions along the way with different fires you can apply and getting a thermal resistance of your building. So we're going to look at what fire severities could you apply, what models could you potentially use if you're designing your structure for fire. Now, we've discussed quite a lot the time temperature curves that do exist. So the general one you'll use is your standard fire. So that's the very most basic benchmark a specific time temperature curve and that goes off to infinity and so from that we can predict a temperature of fire with time with some well-established uh, equations and most of our furnaces use that. Then we also had a look at parametric fires where you can quantify the behavior a little bit more realistically with a heating branch and a cooling branch back to normal so that's when the fire is burning and then into your decay period as it burns out and then back to normal. So that at least takes into account your ventilation conditions, your fuel load and the boundary conditions. So that gives a more accurate approximation of the system. We can also beyond that use uh, zonal models, one or two zone models, which would take in a little bit more into account with um, initial ignition and increasing uh, heat release rate and different behavior. So there's zonal models. So for instance, if this is a cross section through my room, we could have a one zone model where you have a fire down here that's burning. And then we either have a hot, and hot layer at the top and a cold layer at the bottom. So that would be a two zone model. And then if it's post flashover, so once we've got full room involvement, then we end up with a one zone model where the entire room is at one temperature. And there is a piece of software that's uh, very good for this ozone and uh, then can analyze the behavior of this. But there also are the CFAST and various other methods that can be used for predicting um, hot layer, cold layer, and then post flash over CFAST um, uh, ozone and the likes. And then also beyond that, if for instance you've got a fire that's burning and you've got a localized fire and you've got a structure, a beam, a column, whatever it is, we can use a localized fire model to analyze how much heat is transferred into a piece of, or into a section of a structure near this localized fire. And this would possibly more, be more suitable in a larger area where you're not going to get flashover, you're not going to get full room involvement. Instead, you're going to have a distinct position where the fire exists. And the Eurocode and various other models do exist to predict what is happening at my fire and what is happening at a distance from this. So if we know more or less the size of the fire, we can then work out how hot this uh, structural element will get after a period of time. So that's a different model you could use that perhaps would be more suitable for the real fire exposure you're going to get. If we go post flashover, then one of these other models would exist. Also, if going further than that, we can get into computational fluid dynamics if we need to then include furniture and ventilation and all sorts of other factors. We can actually either have simple burners that model the heat release rate. We can even have furniture and books and all sorts of things modeled in here, uh, provided we have data on the heat release of them and windows and doors and the likes, and then run a computational fluid dynamics model with the fire here burning, and then how the fire develops with time. And we can get a lot more detailed outputs, but once again, it requires a lot more detailed inputs and knowledge of how to, to run this. Because the zone, it's broken up, if we're going to analyze this, into a whole bunch of little elements and um, discretized into small volume elements, and then from this um, volumes, it solves the Navier-Stokes equations and there's various simplifications that are uh, made in the software. And we can understand the general behavior of fire as it then burns through the room and you have smoke coming in and out of our openings and air and all sorts of other factors. So that's one way. There's the FDS, Fire Dynamic Simulator, amongst various other packages that can be used to model fire behavior in a, in a room. And then even moving beyond that, a lot of recent, recent work has followed, um, focused on traveling fires. Because if you're in a big building, you're not going to get to flash over. You're not going to have a contained area where the fire exists. But the fire will progressively burn throughout the building. So if this is a floor and our fire is moving through, there's our fire. 
and let's say it's moving in that direction, there are traveling fire models that can be used to predict the temperature as it, as it passes through. So this pink line then predicting the temperature. And then as it moves, we can see what would our real items in this building be exposed to. And from those, we could design the floor, or the beams, or the columns, or whatever different items are required. So this is just giving an overview of some of the models available. There are more coming on the market and more research software being produced, but this gives an, uh, some alternatives of what you can consider. And all of them are potentially useful and all of them potentially safe, but they require different amounts of knowledge and different amounts of skill to be able to apply. But also from the standard fire, it's generally well understood and you can talk the same language as the firefighters and the f approval authorities but there's a lot of approximations and it's not a real world fire right to the other side where these are real world fires which your building may be exposed to but there's a lot less to benchmark it against and a lot more expertise required to utilize and apply these models so you can consider these all sort of tools within your toolbox and can see which of those are the most suitable for what you're designing so thank you very much for this time